silver medalists at the previous two world championships, Brasur and Eisler had visions of Olympic gold. They were primed to end a Russian dominance of the discipline that had accounted for the previous seven pairs gold medals. Last month, Alberville, the original program. The stage was set. The start was dazzling. Then, the pressure overwhelming. I just forgot what I was doing, and I was kind of dying in the reverse there. When I fell, I mean, the door wasn't so far, so I thought of just going off and going home, and or, or say, whoa, stop, okay? Let's erase all that, and let's rewind and start it all over again. But you can't do that. It's too late. It's, you did it. Brasur and Eisler captured the bronze, and an entire nation was reminded of another bitter disappointment. 1984, Sarajevo. Canadians Barbara Underhill and Paul Martini had gold medal aspirations, but a devastating fall, also in the original program, ended their hopes. Then, just a month later at the World Championships, Underhill and Martini won the gold. Now it's a month after the Olympics again, and Brasur and Eisler hope history repeats itself. They are two vastly different personalities. The 5'11 Lloyd's ability rests with his power, and he would rather play hockey than just watch it. At all of five feet, Isabel appreciates the artistry of skating. Admittedly shy, she spends time away from the ice doing quiet things, but it's her inner strength that makes the pair work. She's got to, when it comes to what we do, it's very difficult, and I don't think we can get a lot of girls to do it. The only thing is that she's got to know all the details before she tries it. <laughs> She can't just say, okay, let's go do it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's got to be all written down. It's got, this is what's going to happen. This is where my hand's going to go. This is where it's going to go. And then she'll try it. Me, on the other hand, I just like to go and do it. You know, if, if it works, it works. Well, if it doesn't, I fall. Well, I'll get up and try it again. <laughs> yeah, great, but I'm like 12 feet up there. If it doesn't work and you fall, I'm dead. But Lloyd's self-confidence and sense of control helps assure Isabel he wouldn't let that happen. Popular with Montreal's children, they take time to meet with school groups and are currently putting together a charity ice show featuring Brian Orser and the couple they would emulate, world champions Underhill and Martini. Brasur and Eisler are better known to friends as Fred and Herbie, and in their innovative exhibition program last year, she lived up to her alias. I know when he's mad and he says, I have to stand up right because I know he's mad, and when it's Freddy, I mean, that means he's really nice. He's in a good mood. Fred, it's normal mood. So when it's Isabel, I can't laugh. <laughs> Isabel and Lloyd are hoping that Fred and Herbie skate here in Oakland, and that they laugh all the way to the top of the medal podium. It's nice to go in at the World Championships and, and do well if you haven't done well before. Um, not necessarily redeem a performance, but just for self-satisfaction and, and self-pride, you want to go and say, yeah, see, I can do it. And, uh, you know, so don't come down on me so hard all the time. Here's the remarkable blue-collar U.S. champions, Kala Urbanski at 31, the oldest skater in the entire championships with Rocky Marble after capturing the American title in Orlando. This waitress truck driver pair finished 10th at the Olympics. sink on those spins.
something the judges are looking for. Color Bansky, Rocky Marble. His real name is Rocco Marvaldi. Sounds like a fighter. And boy, that's a quality she brings to the ice as well. And the crowd responds. Their raw athleticism is so appealing. That's going to be fun, Sandra, to watch how they mature in the next two years. They may well be America's top hope in Lily Hummer for an Olympic medal. All they need is time. They need to work on their unison. They're finished. They have all the big tricks. It's the subtleties that are still in need of attention. She has a very unorthodox entrance into her double act, so she holds on to her takeoff edge longer than anybody else. That puts them out of unison and puts her awfully close to the board. Way to go, you guys. Kala Urbanski, Rocky Marble. Kala wearing that uh, engaging oh, smile and going through her own thoughts. <laughs> and now the judges marks the first set for required elements from a high of 5-5, the American judge of 5-5, the French judge not impressed, a 5.0. 5.3. Well, they didn't make any technical errors, but these marks do reflect the problems they had in their uniforms. <laughs> and now the second set. These marks for presentation. A high of 5.6 from the American judge, the French judge, the low 5.3. They have to be very happy with this performance. It was far better than the one they gave in Albertville, but I don't think this is going to put them in medal range. Opening with this spiral sequence, one of the eight required elements. Todd and Natasha have gone back to last year's program and worked for them in Munich. The reason they've gone back is the next move, the side-by-side -side double axles. Todd's had trouble with them, and they're choreographed earlier in this program so he doesn't have to battle fatigue. the strategy worked. John Nix, their coach, who also coached Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner, the last U.S. pair to win the world title in 79. He's a veteran of 28. He's only 15, but so mature. Remarkable composure for a 15-year-old, an excellent competitor.
This partisan American audience loved it. Natasha Kuchiki and Tom Sands. It's not been a great year for this pair after winning the U.S. title a year ago in the bronze in Munich. Third in the Nationals, sixth in the Olympics. That performance should give them a tremendous lift as they go for a medal here in Oakland. They're very happy with this performance. After winning the bronze last year in Munich, that was beyond their wildest dreams, and they've spent all this year trying to prove that position. Here with the side-by-side -side double axles, skid entrance, which makes them even more difficult. The unison is excellent. <laughs> Rotation Don't nice. He fights for that landing. Slight tilt, but it works. And now the marks for Kuchiki and Sand. There's a little delay here, and uh, Natasha <laughs> and Todd say it's killing me. Come on, let me know what my grades are. Here they are, required elements. Oh, my. Polish shot, 4-7. You, you heard Nick, the coach, said that's not right. It's a 5-7. No, sir, a 4-7. The next lowest, a 5-4. How could that be? And there is the judge from Poland who saw something others did not. And now for presentation, again, the Polish judge totally unimpressed, a 5-1, and the crowd now booing high of 5-7 from the Australian and the American judges. Natasha smiling uh, through the bad news. Well, the Polish judge is going to have to.